Or nucleus yet. Physicists working at the Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider RHIC, at Brookhaven National Laboratory, where conditions in the early universe are recreated, have discovered a new type of antimatter nucleus that is the heaviest ever discovered. It consists of four antimatter particles an antiproton, two antineutrons, and one antihyperon and has been dubbed antihyperhydrogen 4. Scientists at the STAR collaboration have observed an unknown, exotic form of heavy antimatter by colliding heavy ions at high speeds in the RHIC accelerator. The antimatter nucleus they discovered in the experiments has been dubbed antihyperhydrogen 4. By studying this particle, physicists hope to uncover key differences between matter and antimatter that could help explain why our universe is filled with matter rather than antimatter. The results and description of the work were published in the journal Nature. It is believed that the properties of matter and antimatter are symmetrical and that at the beginning of the universe there were equal amounts of both. However, some unknown, mysterious mechanism caused the annihilation of most of the matter and antimatter. Only a small part of the matter remained, which created the world we see today. Our physical knowledge of matter and antimatter is such that apart from opposite electric charges, antimatter has the same properties as matter, the same mass, the same lifetime before decay and the same interactions, said Junlin Wu from M involved in the work of the star collaboration. Why is our universe dominated by matter? This is a question to which we still do not have a full answer, he added. What caused the difference in the amounts of matter and antimatter in the universe? To answer this question, an important approach is to create new antimatter in the laboratory and study its properties said Professor Chu Hao from the Institute of Modern Physics M, of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. In today's matter-dominated world, antimatter is extremely rare. It easily annihilates with the surrounding matter. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It is naturally produced during lightning discharges. It is also produced in accelerators such as RHIC. The Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider is a huge device located in the United States at Brookhaven National Laboratory. It can accelerate beams of heavy ions to near the speed of light and cause them to collide. These collisions simulate the conditions of the early universe. They create a mixture of particles that contain roughly equal amounts of matter and antimatter. Some of the antimatter is detected by the accelerator's detectors before it annihilates with matter. RHIC researchers have previously observed nuclei made of antimatter. In 2010, they detected an anti-hypertriton consisting of an antiproton, an antineutron, and an anti-lambda hyperon. This was the first case of an antimatter nucleus containing a hyperon a particle classified as a strange particle containing at least one strange quark, not just the lighter up and down quarks that make up protons and neutrons. A year later, the antimatter equivalent of the helium nucleus was discovered there, anti-helium-4. Hyperons occur in hypernuclei and replace at least one nucleon there. The first hypernucleus was discovered in 1952 by Professor Marion Danas and Professor Jerzy Newski from the Institute of Experimental Physics, Faculty of Physics, University of Warsaw. The newly discovered antihyperhydrogen 4 was created at RHIC. It consists of one antiproton, two antineutrons, and one antihyperon. Due to the presence of an unstable hyperon, antihyperhydrogen 4 decays almost immediately. After analyzing experimental data from about 6.6 .6 billion heavy ion collision events, we reconstructed antihyperhydrogen 4 from its decay products, Wu said, 
adding that they identified a signal of 16 anti-hyperhydrogen 4s. This reconstruction is nothing more than reconstructing the trajectories of anti-helium-4 and pi plus, positively charged pion, particles to see if they emerged from the same point. The researchers also measured the lifetime of anti-hyperhydrogen-4 and found no significant difference compared to the lifetime of its corresponding hyperhydrogen-4 particle, further confirming the symmetry between the properties of matter and antimatter. E